Yeah, hello everyone. Today I want to talk about a topic which I find quite interesting, Amiga. Amiga was the record label of East Germany. It was founded, well, 1947, but uh, was was incorporated into the Volkseigene Betriebe in 1954, where it uh, became part of the Ministry of Culture. So if uh, East Germans wanted to buy records, they had to buy Amiga records. Until 1990, East and West Germany were separated by a wall and East Germans could travel, so they had difficulty in getting Western music. You might uh, get a record, your relatives, if they came to visit, might have bought you one over. The only uh, opportunity you had was to make your own recordings. So uh, you could buy blank tapes for 27 marks or 24 marks, use your Stern recorder or your Eskaya 700 and make tapes from the radio. That was very popular. This dilemma was recognized by the East German government. So from the 70s onward, or basically the 60s, they had licensing agreements with West German record labels and produced, for example, little quartet records, little singles with four songs on them. You could buy them for eight marks and ten, and they were usually bought up very quickly, or you could get them under the counter if you were lucky. Albums were also pressed under this licensing act. Here we have an example of Peter Gabriel's So. It looked pretty much the same except for the back where in East Germany they printed uh, information about the artists, and the songs, and uh, this was all interpreted uh, through socialists' uh, eyes. Here another example of BAP, which is a West German band from Cologne. They sing in Kölsch, which is a a very strong dialect. Again, the back of the album cover was uh, printed with a long text about the artist and the music. But not only were East Germans able to buy LPs, they were able to buy cassettes. That's not so well known. So apart from buying the album for 60 marks and 10, if uh, you were lucky and you had the money, you could buy a tape, a tape of the artist. And as uh, I'm showing here, the uh, design and uh, the cover was basically the same as the album. The inlay card had all the titles and uh, the artists and whoever was involved in the recording. Information on Amiga tapes is very rare and scarce and difficult to find. Um, per year, around 4 million tapes were made by the Amiga label. And um, I guess the number of tapes for the licensed albums and records um, mustn't have been that big. A friend of mine told me that uh, buying tapes was very unusual. If you ever had a tape, it was um, one you got from the library. So people went to the library, uh, picked up a tape, listened to it, or made a, made a copy on their Stern radio and returned it. Here we have uh, some more examples. Again, you have the uh, East German issue of um, here two albums from Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon and Wish You Were Here, and the tape edition also with the same design of the cover. Here the prisma and the uh, colors of the rainbow and a pretty simple sticker on the tape and the basic information on the inlay card. One thing that's, uh, that's interesting to point out is that uh, all the tapes were screwed together. Here's an even older uh, tape, I guess. 
and uh, the, the covers were all the shells were screwed together so you could if something got caught up or was broken or the tape was damaged you could open the shell and make some repairs here have some more examples uh, yeah, two albums, one from Jean-Michel Jarre and the other from the Scorpions. And uh, the Jean-Michel Jarre album is one of those typical best-of albums where they collected uh, tracks from Oxygen 1 and 2 and put them together on one final album. The same with the cassette. And here, if you look at the uh, Scorpions album, Love at First Sting, you see that uh, they took the liberty of um, changing the design of the tape, taking the picture from the back of the um, vinyl edition and just using it for the tape, probably because it was a better size or a nice photo of the band. This is an example of a tape, again, with uh, made with Dolby B noise reduction and recorded on chrome tape. Also very popular in East Germany were ZZ Top. Here have the album and uh, the uh, basic design of Amiga, and, um, the uh, design they use on all their LPs. And with the Dire Straits, also very, very popular. They changed the design of the cover from the vinyl edition to the tape edition. By the way, the tapes still sound pretty good today when I put them on my um, cassette decks and listen to them. They really have passed the test of time. But uh, I rarely, rarely uh, use Dolby bead noise reduction. I just stick in the tapes and listen to the tapes as there are. Okay, and this uh, is my last comparison of two albums, as you see. The front is basically the same as we have it on the West German edition at the back again, designed in the East German fashion of putting in a long, explaining text about the artist and uh, his background and the songs, which, is, uh, which were usually written by East German um, music scholars or historians. Here have an example of the tape. Tape in green just like the album. If you're interested in starting your own collection on Amiga tapes you can go to flea markets or visit eBay or eBay Kleinanzeigen. You can buy them from oh, small amounts like five euros. Some cassettes cost more. My most expensive one is set by ACDC. I think I paid about 12 euros for that, but usually I try not to spend more than uh, five, five euros on a tape. As with everything people collect, it's also a question of in what shape the cassette is and the tape and the shell. So I usually look out for proper shells. Yeah, here again you can see the screws. Yeah, apart from um, licensed albums, East Germany also issued yeah, their own compilation tapes. Here's one example. And uh, whoever would have thought that uh, Audrey Landers and uh, Culture Club 
would uh, come together on one tape. Here I uh, was Austrian band, Erste Allgemeine Verunsicherung. We made uh, fun, fun songs with fun lyrics. And uh, also classical albums were reproduced. Here an example where the London Symphonic Orchestra plays Jethro Tell for 23 marks and 60 East German marks. Yeah, so uh, if you start collecting these kind of tapes over time, you do get uh, a nice little collection together. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to collect yourself, please do so. It's a nice hobby. Music is always a very nice hobby. Thanks for watching and take care.